Hello everyone, we're the Platinum Channel and I'm Bruno, a host from the Crypto Herd and today we bring you a very special guest Chris Wood, COO of Pixelmatic, the company behind Infinite Fleet and we're starting right now Chris Wood, welcome to play to earn Very happy to have you here with us. How are you today? I'm doing real good, man. I'm seeing you, so I'm good. I'm real good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Thanks, thanks. Really nice to have you here with us. So, Chris, do you want to introduce yourself and talk a bit about your background and your job at Pixelmatic, the company behind Infinite Fleet? Yeah, no problem. So uh, obviously, Chris Wood, I'm the COO over at Pixelmatic. I've been working for Pixelmatic for over five years now, working on a game called Infinite Fleet. Uh, when I started at Pixelmatic, Infinite Fleet was mostly an idea. Uh, we had, you know, like two or three people working on it. Um, and we were just, you know, putting together some pretty cool prototypes and concept art and stuff. But now we're getting towards having 70 people working on this huge Whoa, okay. MMO game right now. Um, as you know, the, you know, the graphics of the game look good. The mechanics are really cool. It feels super smooth. Um, and we generally think that this is this is going to be a huge, huge uh, space game that I'm, I'm really excited about because everyone who plays this game, they're just thinking, oh, you know what? This is this is going to be cool, man. You know, <laughs> so it's it's been a hell of a journey, but it's really, really exciting. Yeah, yeah. I tried. I've been trying the closed off and uh... I really like how you guys combine like a strategy with the uh, MMORPG elements. I think it's, it's a really nice um, combination of different elements. It's quite a fresh take on the genre because typically, yeah. you know, when we were first putting it together, we spent a lot of time thinking we were going to have this bird's eye view, right? Which you would have normally in a strategy game like Age of Empires yes. or Starcraft okay. or whatever. You're like, you're like God, right? Looking down. But the problem with that is that you can't get the real depth and beauty of space, right? When you're in space, you want to explore, you want to go past black yes. holes, nebulas, star binary okay. stars, all this kind of, you want to feel that, you know? So we, we thought we'd create this, this hybrid system, which was like real close to the action. You're like third person behind this really big ship, your fleet. And then you've also got the ability to zoom out and do the more tactical positioning later. Now, right now, as you know, in the alpha, the, obviously you can position things, but there's not a whole lot going on there. But later, we're actually going to be implementing directional damage. So obviously each uh, enemy ship is going to be maybe more vulnerable from the back or the sides or whatever. So going from the sides is going to, is going to be really important. And positioning those fleets is going to make a lot of, uh, a lot of impact in the game. Yeah, yeah, so I think in the Infinite Fleet, like the position and range of your ship, the angle is much more important than having like yeah. more like fast reflexes or... Well, that's the point, because at the end of the day, mate, I'm an old bugger now, you know, I can't, I don't have those, that speed I used to have <laughs> playing StarCraft when I was a kid. I want to, We wanted to make a game that as old people could play too, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, in that, you may, that makes perfect sense. And I think that the... The, it, it kind of aligns a little bit more like the Total War series. If you've ever played Total War before, you know, you have these big yeah. armies and you kind of position them in the right place to, to combat well and you have the right types of units and things to overcome the enemy. Uh, and it is a little bit slower, but at the same time, I think it's very cinematic and you get that real Star Wars feel with the mechs flying around and the, you know, lasers going off. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sounds good. When are we having uh, an open beta? That will be in Q2 of this year. Um, so yes. basically, right now, we're in, as you mentioned, we're in the alpha. <laughs> and, uh, you know, obviously, we're very, very appreciative for our alpha testers who've been giving lo us loads of feedback and letting us know how it feels, the game. But we're going to be resetting. We're going to be stopping the alpha, pulling the plug, and then going into beta at the, you know, around, around the end of Q2. And at that point, it's a, it's a fresh start. We will reward our players with INF, and of course, the ships they've bought will still be the same. We will reward them with INF, and at that point, we start from uh, you know the, the beta game as such, and then we iterate bigger and bigger and bigger, and add features on about maybe every two months or a month and a half. We'll have a release schedule of some really cool content, you know, things like mechs, things like the directional damage, uh, being able to traverse the galaxy, having guilds, uh, team chat, all these kind of things that you'll okay, find in okay. in MMOs. Actually. We're seeing like nowadays lots of games popping up in like a Polygon and Solana, lots of games in Solana. But you guys yeah, decided indeed. to go your own way and you chose <laughs> Liquid. Why this yes. decision, Chris? 
Well, uh, you know, to be honest, Liquid is... It has mature tooling. So look, I'm not a technical guy, so I can't I can't talk in terms of the okay, actual okay. the tools and mechanics and that. I'm not an engineer, but our CTO Sunny loves Liquid. Uh, you know, we've got rapid uh, transactions as well. It's secure. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a layer two of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, obviously, yeah. being the most battle hard, the most battle tested crypto out there. Uh, you know, it def Bitcoin's definitely here for the the long haul. You know, um, yeah. Because at the end of the day. Like you say, I mean, a lot of games are being built on Solana now. I don't really know a lot about Solana. Maybe it's great. I don't know, but it is fairly fresh. And who's to say there won't be something, you know, better a year from there or, or whatever. But Bitcoin is going to be around for a long time. And um, for us, you know, we also work very closely with Blockstream, who are the company that, that built Liquid, right? Uh, you know, Samson Mo right now, he's, uh, you know, he's been over in El Salvador in Mexico and stuff, spreading out the Lightning Network, working with, you know, uh, as an ambassador with with uh blockstream to make things uh things be going with with bitcoin so for us it made total sense to use this chain because we, we believe strongly in bitcoin we really do and and uh like i say our engineers are quite happy working with it as well there's one thing that i forgot to mention that's really okay, cool okay. about liquid as well is atomic swaps so the reason that we're implementing nfts into our game and obviously the inf token is that we can facilitate a totally trustless transaction between two parties, right? So with the atomic swap, either both of the, you know, the, the, the transactions happen at the same time or they don't happen at all. So there is no need to, you know, trust these people on dodgy websites or anything like that. You can, you can you know, do it one-to-one -one on Telegram or something like that. And if someone kind of bails out, it's not a problem because both assets need to be transferred at exactly the same moment. So this really opens the door okay. for um, solving the sort of black market issues that have been around since, you know, Second Life, World of Warcraft started. <laughs> I mean, you know, these, this, this is like an age old thing, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, it's more safe. It's what you're saying, right? Yeah, you it's don't like need to trust the other risk. party, right? You know, okay. if I say, oh, I'm going to sell you this ship, uh, but, it, but you, you know, it's like when I was a kid, I played Guild Wars and one time I bought a whole bunch of the platinum on the game, you know, out of the terms of service, but ugh, hopefully Arena, Arena Network destroy me. Um, and I spent, you know, five bucks or whatever it was on eBay. And the person told me, OK, wait in this server at this place and I'll come with your digital, with your uh, platinum, it was called. And I was sitting there like for like half an hour or something sweating, yeah. like, is this person going to turn up? Is this person going to turn up? I have no <laughs> idea. But this completely eliminates that issue. You could trade uh, liquid assets, you know, on any platform, peer to peer, whatever. And there's no need for trust uh, third parties. So it's great. OK, that's perfect. That's perfect. So that was a wise decision, I guess. We feel so. <laughs> <laughs> so Infinite Fleet. We saw mining and questing so far in the alpha. What else are we going to be able to do in Infinite Fleet, Bruce? Well, I mean, it's obviously going to be an ongoing project, but some of the cool things, of course, we're going to have yeah. uh, guilds built into the beta and later the, the divisions, idea of... right? Uh, the divisions. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So, and people within the divisions will have different ranks and you'll be able to actually craft quests for other Whoa, players okay. so you're going to be able to say oh you know go to alpha centauri there's a whole bunch of atrox there go kill 20 of them and come back and then the inf reward will actually be um distributed amongst you know the person who creates the quest and the person who's who goes and does it essentially so you so this uh, this will obviously be when you've kind of ranked up a little bit in your guild also you'll have these things called epic projects so you might as a guild leader you'll be able to say, okay, we're going to build a Titan ship. Titan ships are these massive, yeah. huge class of ship, you know? Whoa. <laughs> and the, uh, you know, like five, 10 times the size of the normal ships. And basically all the players can contribute resources to that. They, they, they don't have to, it's just something they can do. Okay. Contribute resources to the building of this, this class of ship. And then the guild leader is going to say, okay, we'll send this ship over there and then people go with it and then go and attack and, and do whatever in these in these events. So the okay. plan is as a strategy game, we really wanted to incorporate the the building side because I don't know about you, but when I played Age of Empires, when I played Star, I just like base building. You know, I just love building these huge, sprawling, exciting bases. This castle, never ending castle. Exactly. <laughs> Lots that's of towers what... and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's yeah. what you know, that's all I used to do in RTSs back in the day. And so we want the same thing. You know, if you've got a guild with like a thousand people, right, with all these resources uh hanging out in 
you know, the okay. near the nearest star system. They're just going to build defense platforms, mining installations, space stations, all this kind of stuff. It's going to build and build and build and build, of course, until the Atrox come and try to destroy it. So that's up to okay. you to try and defend, you know? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So this massive ship that we're going to build, that's not going to be piloted by anyone. It's just going to be no. like a NASA ordered. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So Automated. so currently, the current plan, I mean, I, like I said, look, this is early days, you know, I mean, 10 years from now, who knows? But right now, the plan is that you control your Centurion ship, we call it. So you've got this, uh, it's like about a kilometer long ship, and then you've got four cruisers that go with it. So there's two class of ship right now, and also uh, squads of small fighter mecha as well, which will essentially be press a button, go and attack. Uh, but you have direct control of the Centurion, which you can kind of guide around uh, asteroid fields. You know, you can have very strong control of it. Then you go into tactical view where you can say, go there, go there, go there, go there and position. Um, but then the Titan ships will be more NPC. So the guild leader NPC, would more okay, likely okay. to be say, oh, you know, send that to, to that event or something like this. OK, now, now you touched a very interesting point, which you, you mentioned that the Aatrox might attack. So mm. what if the Aatrox attack and you're offline? Oh, uh, well, I mean, the guild hopefully helps you out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> well, look, I mean, so this is the thing. I mean, you you are part of the USF. You're part of uh, this, this, you know, humanity as such. And, and it is a cooperative game. So I, I'm going to be honest, I don't have the actual specifics of, you know, how the Aatrox are going to behave in terms of like when, when you're offline, if they're going to come specifically to your planet. Uh, as far as I'm aware, that is what's going to happen. But my designers might push back on me there. So I don't want to confirm that right now. But the, the general idea was that it's a sandbox galaxy. It's procedurally generated huge galaxy where the you know humans are thrown in there. We build up buildings and whatever to try to, to defend. And the Aatrox are out there and they're going to come and attack us <clears throat> and use their strategy, macro strategy to come and attack us as well. So as far as I'm currently aware, and my designers might push back on me, as far as I'm currently aware, yeah, the Atrox are going to come even when you're offline, mate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I guess like um, the Federation is going to be like the combination of all the divisions, right? So it's not just going to be like your guild or your division. It's going to be the, yeah. the whole player base uh, being organized against this common threat, right? Yeah. Well, we spoke very early on. And again, I, I, I'm not sure. I've not spoken to the designers about this recently, but we spoke very early on, me and Samson, about having the idea of, of uh, being able to send distress signals from your phone. So if it turns out that the attracts are coming to you, you can send a distress, just a distress signal to reward anyone who comes and helps you. Like to, to help oh, you defend your stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. an idea that we had very early on. I'm not sure if that will definitely happen, but that's something we, we spoke about, yeah. That's a good idea. So if you're like in the beach and oh, the Aatrox are coming! <laughs> please, Jesus! Send some INF. Send some INF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris, it's been a while since we saw an update to the Alpha. Are we going to see like another update like um, uh, in some time or the yeah. next step is the open beta? Next step is open beta. And I'll tell you why. Um, okay. That's we we made we we got the alpha to a certain point. We know obviously we made sure that you know try to be as uh, as least buggy as possible. It's still playable. You know obviously if the okay, launcher yeah. has problems, we we update it and 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 try to get rid of these kind of bugs. But the reason that we're not updating it is because uh, we kind of did a blog about this a while ago that we were using um, an entity component system with Unity. It, it was kind of a system that would or or a you know a method that would have allowed us to have. I mean, hundreds of thousands of units on a map. I mean, it was it's really cool. You know, ECS is really cool, but Unity kind of pulled the plug on us and they weren't going to support it. Um, so we decided to go back to legacy Unity. Um, and, and so we basically had two different branches, two different uh, deployments and such. So we kind of, obviously we don't want to split our team, right? We don't want a whole bunch of people working on updates for something that we're essentially going to pull the plug on later. You know, it makes, okay, no sense. makes sense. So yeah. we're focusing all of our resources into beta. I mean, the, the progress has been amazing, you know? Um, so yeah, we're working full, you know, firing on full cylinders on, on making a great beta. So yeah, that's the reason. Uh, yeah. I think, I think that that makes sense. I think that makes sense. So, Open beta, which features are we going to see? Which new features are we going to see in the open <laughs> beta? It's just a, a few months from now. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, well, there's definitely going to be more POIs for sure. Points of interest where you know you where you can go. Um, mechs are going to be in there. 
so Whoa, finally okay. finally that's, we're gonna be exciting. able to play with some mechs exciting. absolutely yeah because uh, it's like some ships that uh their specialty is like having a big amount of mechs right yes and exactly. so far in the alpha th those ships are not that useful but correct correct okay. so if you if you notice when you're playing the alpha you can you can hit missiles right and the missiles will go and, go and hit things that that yeah, was just a, a proof of concept rough. Yeah, yeah, that was just a proof of concept for the, using an ability, right? So there'll be a specific ship that has missiles as its ability. In fact, how it works is there's, there's the Centurion and the four cruisers. Each one brings an ability that you can activate at the bottom. So, um, and mechs will be included in that. So you'll have, you know, missiles and, and, and other things as well. And there will be more abilities in the in the beta. So there'll be a bar of abilities that you have based on the ships that you, you own um like i say you'll have mechs let me see i've got i've just got to be careful about what i can actually reveal <laughs> <laughs> um oh and also more more different types of atrox ships as well because currently there's just one type oh yeah know, the, with uh, the laser, they, they just right? kind of circle around you know <laughs> like now there's, <laughs> there's actually going to be more different types of atrox ship as well so there's going to be a little bit more there and like i say from that point from that 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 uh, drop in the water as such we will continue to build and build and add more features on a six to eight week basis where we'll be putting more in, like I say, directional damage, uh, the guilds, uh, the chat system's going to be in there. And I, yeah, the chat system's going to certainly be in there. I'm not sure about divisions yet. Okay. Okay. So but it's yes, coming soon. Yeah. Slowly you'll like update the game and bring like one feature at each time to test yeah. it out. Okay. Makes sense. Exactly. Exactly. So, Chris, since this is a play-to-earn game, how are players going to be able to earn in Infinite Fleet? Right, so look, we, we don't call it a play-to-earn game, to be honest. We don't really push that. The point, like I said, the point of the NFTs and the INF currency is to allow for open trade. You can trade your digital assets however you wish. Um, whether or not you'll be able to specifically play to earn, you know, dollars or something, that's not something that we're really really pushing as as uh as necessarily an opportunity but what, what i will yeah. say is that basically it's not the main focus yeah. no it's more about <laughs> open openly being able to trade your assets because we believe that you know there are many um definitions of ownership in this industry in some for some people like engine or someone like that they'll say ownership is where you can have your ship and or, or item and put it into other games and do this kind of metaverse thing uh, a lot of people say that's that's ownership. For us, it's not so much. Uh, for us, ownership is the ability to trade, right? So if you have some the ship or something like that, then you should be able to own that asset in the sense of being able to then you know trade it with other people. If you don't really want to play Infinite Fleet anymore after you know after you've been playing for ten years, your beard's okay. been growing and you're just too tired, um, <laughs> it's time it's time to maybe check out and you can you know sell <laughs> sell your stuff um, and move on to a different game maybe. So that's that's the way we're looking at it basically how are you going to earn I inf that's the that's the question i think okay am i, am I okay. right yeah, yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> how are you going to earn inf you're going to take part in events so there's going to be a number of ways obviously it's similarly to other games where it's like oh you know uh there's like weekly events which might be smaller there might be you know monthly events which last for a long period of time the participation you have in those events will generate INF for you. And we're working with complex algorithms to make sure that that's not very easily bottable. <laughs> we're trying, you know, oh, okay. we're going to make sure that there's, there's a lot of strategy involved in order to do that. So the idea is that you want to be the MVP. You want to give the most to these events. Value, okay. <laughs> exactly. Um, and as, as I said, you know, people are going to be able to craft events for each other as well. That's okay. Yeah, also the quest. INF exactly so that's it's it's what we call proof of participation take part in the game you know really get into the game and you will earn inf and that inf you'll be able to trade nft ships and you know other digital assets as well as, as you wish proof of participation interesting concept so i guess this game does is not going to have that many npcs right since players are going to be the ones giving the quests I, I mean there will be campaign lines as well there will be stories as well you know oh, okay. uh, we're gonna There's have maybe... no it's not not like a it's not like a main quest like you'd have in world of warcraft you know yeah but we're gonna have this continuous um sort of developing storyline uh that that happens you know there's things that we know we're going to throw at the players oh you know it's like for instance you know there's a lot of things i know that we're going to be throwing at the players that i can't talk about and i can't wait for you to okay, see okay, okay. <laughs> uh years later 
but uh, generally speaking, the reaction is going to be authentic from the players, yes. So you're right, there, there are going to be fewer NPCs, but we will have some quest lines in there and little campaigns for sure. As well, okay. You know? Yeah, 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 of course. There's going to be a good story and a lot of lore to unearth, yeah. Okay, interesting. So now that we um, talked about INF, what is going to be the max supply of INF and how's the initial distribution going to be done? Okay, so it's basically going to be pretty reflective of uh, bitcoins. I can't um, give you the specific number yet because I don't. Th I don't think we've announced it. Um, I can't remember to be honest, but I don't think we've announced it. So, but that's coming. Okay. That's coming. We're that's actually coming. Uh, we're actually working on an announcement that's going to come in a few weeks. But basically, um, it's going to be quite reflective of bitcoins, like an emission curve. So, the early adopters, of course, are because you know, like I say, we believe in bitcoins, so we kind of want to reflect that 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 similar distribution way. Um, we intend to be quite open um, about, you know, what is in circulation, what we are intending to, to, to send out in terms of that emission curve. But yeah, the early the early adopters obviously will have uh, more opportunity to earn more on INF. But then as the years go on, it's going to get more and more difficult as with Bitcoin, essentially. OK, but is there going to be like a sale or something? No. No sale. We're ne we're, like, you're never going to be able the to game. OK, just yeah, play the you... game and you OK. We will never, we, we are not selling INF. We're not earning money from INF. We're not monetizing okay, this okay. at all. So this is for the players. This is not for us. Okay. Respect so, <laughs> well, we're, you know, we're, we're raising money from a traditional security way, right? I mean, it's not Exo, bad Exo, it's, right? it's a security token, so it's not bad traditional, but it's, uh, um, you know, we, we have a regulated security that we're raising investment from, right? Um, and the INF token is is it's a game feature, you know. This is for the gamers. It's free for you guys, you know. It's it's absolutely something okay. that we we wanted to provide for you. And like I say, we're not monetizing from it, you know. So that's that's uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but um, yeah, the EXO token for people who don't know, it is a security token, also okay. launched on on Liquid. Um, it offers a essentially a dividend each year of our net profits. Um, so it's a 20% net profit share, which is equally distributed amongst EXO token holders. There are no other share classes in terms of the equity. So it's basically all EXO token holders, it includes our team and founders and stuff like that. Whatever is sent into that bucket, that's, that's what goes to everybody as such. Um, and of course, you know, if, if we were bought out by Tencent or something like that, if there was some capital, you know, M&A, then the capital for that would also be equally distributed 100% across all EXO token holders. So it's essentially equity in the company. Oh, sounds like an interesting investment opportunity. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, sign up at Bitfinex Securities. If so, it's, <laughs> you know, we're going to be uh, the... Um, so Bitfinex has got their, their securities platform, which has just launched. They just recently, they're doing the Blockstream mining notes, I believe at the moment. I'm not sure specifically uh where they're at with that right now but the exo is going to be coming out very very soon on there so if you head over to bitfinex securities then you'll be able to okay. get your kyc done first <laughs> so chris we saw many uh games where there's like some crypto assets kind of dying because basically players cashed out all the time and there was like no incentive for players to like um reinvest back into the game what how are you going to avoid this in infinite fleets you know what i mean like for example x infinity now like slp went to like 0.1 cents because everyone was just cashing out of the game you know and this happened with other uh crypto games basically well let me you ask you I mean? why are they cashing out why do you think they're cashing out well because they want to make a profit <laughs> sure 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 they want to make so, a profit to the game so for us like i say the INF token is going to be deflationary from on one sense, but also it's a game, you know, it's a long term okay. game. To be honest, I mean, look, obviously, the, the like I say, for us, we're not doing typical play to earn. We're not talking about INF having necessarily value. That's kind of what people see as value will be up, up to them. You know, we just want to make a great okay. game. And we believe that the INF token will have inherent value if the game is great. Now, a lot of people okay. who, you know, I think, I mean, Axie Infinity, we've spoken about this before. I think it's a really cool game. 
Gods Unchained also, I think, is a really cool game and stuff like that. But I think a lot of people who play, they do it just directly for, you know, investment purposes or something like this. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's not us, you know, for, for us. <laughs> there's, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's like going to play World of Warcraft or something like this, you know, or EVE Online. This is a, this is a game, you know, a really great game. And, um, you know, the price of uh, INF, should it have a price, should it discover some kind of value, um, will be irrelevant to the status of the game itself. And like I say, we're not directly monetizing from it. Um, so it's really totally free market. We we believe totally in free markets. So how, how that is all dealt with will, will be based completely on the players. And of course, what we'll do is is make sure that the game is as fun and as awesome as it can possibly be and so, also that the thing the things that inf can trade with are just really fucking cool as well <laughs> okay okay do you want to talk yeah, about no. some of those things that you can do with inf nope. <laughs> <laughs> not yet i can't yet okay, i can't I can. my, my design is going to kill me <laughs> <laughs> well we'll well space stations space station whoa okay mm, giant space stations whoa they're gonna be so okay, that sounds we sent some concept art before it's so cool you know these things are amazing so yeah you're gonna you, you you'll be able to basically trade entire massive space stations which you know might collect a little bit of tax in the economy in the local area and stuff like that so that's gonna be pretty awesome okay interesting interesting sounds good so you guys made a tweet some time ago where we saw with lo what looked like max do you want to comment on that let me just put this on on the screen here wait sure let me start. that's that's the hammer yeah okay assault mode this is what we call Whoa, assault this mode. Looks so epic. Basically, yes indeed <laughs> this uh the hammer is you know purchasable right now on the store so the hammer is um it's a centurion ship mm -hmm. and centurion ships will be able to transform into giant mecha as well uh, as the squads and things that uh, that will be uh, that will be in. In fact, our plan is basically for almost everything in the game to be transformable. Um, so, so okay. we just because we just like kick ass robots. To be honest, you know, we're yeah. all big anime fans and things. <laughs> um, so that's just that's uh, absolutely part of it. And Assault Mode will obviously come with its own uh, specific, you know, um, like advantages and things on the battlefield. Um, I, so I can't guess... talk specifically about that, unfortunately. But uh, I'm guessing uh, going to have like more firepower, but less speed uh, in this mode, in this mecha mode. I can't <clears> confirm or deny, but I'll say you're, you know, sure. <laughs> <Kind of stuff>. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a, it's a good guess. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good guess. You know, it's a pretty good guess. But but no, I mean, look, I, I, I can't give the specifics. The design will will come out with that kind of thing. But yeah, assault mode will have its specifics that uh, make them just really, really cool when they transform, you know. And of course, they have strategic impact, obviously. Yeah, everything's going to have its strategic impact for sure. Ooh, super super hyped about this Chris <laughs> yeah man yeah man so the thing is look if you're if you're a person who likes building buildings you're gonna have a good time okay. if you like blowing stuff up with your friends you're gonna have a great time if you're if you a like strategy building, lover too. if you're a strategy lover if you're a person who likes being part of a guild and you know supporting the war machine by like mining and making trade routes and things like this uh you know like supply chains and stuff you're gonna have a great time this 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 game has really you know all the the archetypes of of what an mmo player might enjoy it's all gonna be there wrapped around awesome kick-ass graphics an awesome storyline which is uh, we didn't even speak about the directed narrative which is actually going to shift based on the community's um okay. actions you know i mean that's that's just a really cool thing where the entire story is going to change based mm. on the reactions of the player um oh, okay so are, are we going to have voice acting yeah yeah for sure okay for sure absolutely absolutely in fact we got this we got some really cool voice actors actually who joined yeah. the trailer we got the uh, the uh, uh, the guy who did the original vegeta voice it's over nine thousand because you, you know the old bitcoin really? thing, it's over nine thousand <laughs> you know okay, this, okay. this thing <laughs> this meme yeah like um brian we actually we got the guy and uh he's he he loves the project you know he's he's uh definitely gonna be gonna be part of it uh commander chase the the voice of him he's actually one of the lead characters i think he is the main character in dying light 2 which just came out it's like a massive triple a game it just came out a few days ago okay, okay. um it's, it's kira zombies, buckland right? she was uh, she was in near automata um so oh, i don't know if you know really near. good game actually it's like yeah uh... 2b she's 2b yeah. yeah that's like a game that went completely under the radar but I oh, think it was so epic like the storyline uh Amazing. the gameplay everything it was really cool i mean 
really you know there's there's an amazing there's an amazing i can't remember who who uh who the critic was now but there was an amazing game review for that game it's an amazing game and uh, the guy at the end said if history doesn't remember near automata then fuck history <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it's true, an that's amazing true. game <laughs> Yeah, but it's not very, it's not uh, well known. It's like not many people know about this project, actually. But yeah, it's really I think I, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's mostly people who are into that kind of thing, you know, like anime and RPGs and stuff like that. But I'll tell you what, though, it's one of those games that afterwards you're just like, <gasps> you know, you just feel so <laughs> tired emotionally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it Good really though. makes you think about uh, like abstract comp concepts and everything, you know. It's very existentialist, yeah. Like, it's, uh, it's what is game. humanity? Okay, okay. Yes, indeed. Let's, what let's... is it? What is it, Bruno? <laughs> Are we human? What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chris, last question. Sure. What do you think in general about Play to Earn and NFT gaming? And where do you think this is heading in the near future? Um, I think, I think there's some great projects. I think there's some, just to be direct, horrible scams. Uh, I'm not going to name names. Okay, okay. But I, I think that I think it's coming hard it was we're very early i think we're very early i think the triple a's are coming in um nfts are are, are here to stay for sure there is Definitely. no doubt about that and i think we're in the early wave i think the important thing is to pick projects that have substance have a great team have a good vision um and you got you got to try and avoid the scams and to be honest like when it comes to avoiding scams uh you know i think you've spoken about this before in previous videos right you, you've yes. got to do your research you got to look at the team who what have they built before right because if they've never built a game before uh, they're gonna have trouble because even if even, even if they make a whole bunch of money and they just outsource it to some other studio which other games have done they've they don't understand what they're spending they don't understand scope they'll just say oh build this build this build this build this build this yeah, just yeah. make this massive game and they don't realize that in order to make a massive game look at star citizen they made 280 million or something like this and they're still not got the game out you know okay it's yeah, not yeah. about it you know it, it sc scope is very important so make sure that you know the team is strong that's and you know look at linkedin look where they come from all this kind of stuff um don't just get pulled in by you know some flashy artwork or or like a little gif or something or like so that because... promising roy because that that's what you see nowadays in nft roy? game uh return, of, return of investment oh oh yeah because there, there's <laughs> like this project and their advertisement is like roy in 30 days and yeah lots of people ah, invest yeah, yeah. in that lots of people fall yeah, well, for that people get cut. you know I, I gotta say you know even for us you know we because we've had to push people because the amount of times in telegram people will come in and say how do i buy the inf token i want to buy this right now and it's yeah. like oh you, you know you can't you can't buy it we're, we're actually not selling it and it's it's not a thing so it, it just shows me well if they want to buy this token they didn't even do the most basic research that it's not even available to buy that we're never going to sell it right <laughs> so why did they want to buy it so quickly it's because of hype because someone shows something and they think oh this is going to be the next big thing um yeah. do your own research always always look always, at the team always. what's the long-term plan here what's what's you know have these people build something before i think the team is the most important thing actually and also look at you know it has something been built because it's so easy to go on art station and just get a couple of concept designers for a few hundred books to make something that looks really really cool or to get a few assets off the unreal store or 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 U unity 3d store or something like that make something that looks kind of cool and yeah. just say hey look you know this this is a, this is our game you know um <laughs> it's it's so easy to do stuff like that you need more substance if you can get your hands on the game if you can get your hands on it and you can play it and you enjoy it great just go for it okay, for instance okay. i like i like gods unchained i think gods unchained is really cool I think it's a definitely great game. solid you know, project. Really... Solid. Yeah, project. I think it's a really solid project. I like it a lot. Yeah, I like it a lot. And I think the guy behind the Gods and Chain was also behind the Magic: The Gathering. I think. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, he's been he's been around go. for a while. There you go. Experience. Experience been for a while. in developing games. Yep, uh, he's been around the block. Yeah, and, and I think uh, what's even worse is that sometimes you only have like a white paper and. <sighs> Don't people do, still don't, invest. Yeah. <laughs> like this is our game white uh, 10 page white paper or light paper and people yeah. go there and they, they they invest everything you know it's like well crypto you know what mate? <laughs> crypto you know what? style <laughs> if you if you see a white paper and you think it just looks really fucking cool and you don't mind throwing a hundred books and saying you know what it's a gamble i'm probably gonna lose this okay, could be. Uh, fine sure you know have fun it's a casino right there's you know like uh, <laughs> why not why not but if if you're being serious do research 
deep research yes definitely <laughs> guys valuable advice for all you nft gamers out there <laughs> yeah hope so <laughs> oh and uh do a lot of research on infinite fleet we've got a good team <laughs> okay okay <laughs> you got the Vig vegeta you got the vegeta guy got vegeta. what else do you need what can go what wrong <laughs> what else do you need <laughs> we've not even reached our final form yet <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna take a loan and invest everything and buy all the ships <laughs> <laughs> careful <laughs> awesome man thank you very much thank you very much that was a lot of fun bruno that was, that was yeah that good was nice about Infinite Re League. really enjoyed to have you here with us chris thank you very much for showing up and uh, telling us a bit about your project and nft gaming in general sure well let's talk again when the bait is out shall we let's do it let's, let's go play it. It, yeah man <laughs> always sounds great Infinite Fleet is getting more and more exciting with its open beta coming in just a few months. So I believe this game is going to be completely different than what you'd expect from a space sci-fi MMORPG. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe for more NFT gaming reviews. Hope you guys all have an amazing week and I see a Crypto Maniacs in the metaverse.